Welcome to 30 Minutes of Madness. It's your girl, Lily Madness, here on QBC TV 22. And I'm here with a very special guest today. Help me welcome Stevie Lee, artist, entrepreneur, and so much more. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I am so excited to get started, so shall we? <laughs> sure, well, I'd like to start by giving you a gift. Oh, wow, thank you. These are from my friend at Stargazer Florist, and it's an online delivery service, so I deliver them oh, personally this time. Wow, oh my God, they're so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> These are absolutely beautiful. Where are they located? Uh, they in online? Berlin, New Jersey, and online. And they're oh, veteran-owned, nice. so it's pretty cool. They, you know, you're supporting people who have given their lives. Wow, so they're veteran-owned. Mm -hmm. That's very yeah. important. Awesome. Okay, so support, <laughs> support, support. Um, so let's, let's get started. Um, tell me a little bit about what is your expertise and a little bit about um, how you got started. Okay. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I started as um, a little girl um, locally. I grew up in Vineland, New Jersey, Richland, Buna, the whole South Jersey area, um, as a singer, songwriter, and just doing community events. And then that kind of propelled into, you know, New York City and Vegas and LA. And um, how it happened for me was I got to a place that I believed was the top of the top around all the celebrities and everybody that everybody wants to be like and I started to observe that the lifestyle that everyone was living was heavy and it was something that I felt like hmm, I don't know if I can commit to this kind of lifestyle because it was very destructive um, and I believe that there was more and might sound funny to a lot of people who think like, oh, well, that, that's, that's the top of the top. That's where you're supposed to be. Um, but I'm going to boldly say that even at the top of the top in the entertainment industry, they still have a way of making you feel like you're still all the way at the bottom. And if you have a moral ladder, ladder you'll understand what I mean in that concept. So um, I won't name drop, but a lot of the people yeah. around me, um, I was a witness to a lot of people who had drug addictions. Um, they were trying or attempting suicide right in front of me in Los Angeles. It got really heavy. It got really deep. And um, you know, I'm like, I'm like, God, like, there's got to be more. There's got to be a better way. And you know, I just always heard, I have more for you. So it didn't look like more when I got home. It was a lot of ramen noodles and brown rice <laughs> and like lollipops and stuff. Um, and it was hard, you know. But um, I really believe that God has me on a journey um, to see and be a witness to things. And just recently, um, after I produced this with uh, my friend Raphael Hamilton, this was like my purity album to kind of like rebel against always being told what to do or being like a sexual, you know, propellant of music when that's not what I started singing for. You know, I believed it was there was more of a purpose in that term. So. Moving forward, produced the album. Uh, the last time I sang, I shared the, sa uh, the stage with like the Kardashians and Jamie Foxx and all these people. And I just remember being on that stage right before I, I walked out and like I had to stop myself from crying because I just felt like this is it. You're not gonna get back out on this stage in front of 30,000 people for a long time. And I just felt that if the next time I was gonna step on a platform, it better be to fill these people up and not to be like, oh, everybody look at me, you know, like, it's all about me, you know, like, no, it's, it's not. Especially when we're artists, we have the privilege to step on a platform and feed the people, you know, and, and let's be mindful. So I, I made a pledge to myself that time in somewhere around 2015 in Greensboro, North Carolina. And um, I said, you know, I pledge that I will be mindful of all content, imagery, everything that I put out. Um, in my own personal network, on my Instagrams, and how I present myself. And from that point on, I enrolled in school. I put my music career on the back burner or on the shelf, or I, I really thought it was going in the yeah. trash. Like, I never yeah. wanted to do it again. And then um, I got a degree in complementary alternative health and medicine. 
and I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I got really passionate about our food industry and how the entertainment and the food industry has a lot of deceit in it. Mm. And um, I started, it started to get really deep for me. Yes. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, the story just kind of unraveled. There's a lot of chapters, a lot of layers. And, you know, fast forward to 2017, I had a vision um, from God, and it was about prey stock. It was like Woodstock reinvented. The heart of Stevie Lee is family. I grew up in a huge family, um, 27 first cousins, you know, wow. and now those kids are having kids, and I'm the oldest girl, so I always felt looked up to. And, you know, I thought, you know what, regardless of, believe me, there were reckless chapters of my life as well. <laughs> I didn't get here, like, just smoothly. It was very rough. I was a rock star. Um, so from falling off Hollywood stages to coming back to the roots of Vineland, New Jersey and South Jersey um, to give back to the people something to believe in, this is where Prey Stock came to be. And I recognized that there was a lot of people out there doing wonderful things in their own little spaces, but they weren't connecting. They weren't coming together because they were afraid, like out of fear, that if I connect to you, well, you might have more spotlight than me. And, you know, it was all fear I was recognizing. And I said, how, how can we bring this all together where all these great people who are doing wonderful things, how can we come together and become a good channel? How can we become an army of goodness and light and positive impact and, you know, getting the word out in a positive way back to the roots of our community, almost like an underground music and entertainment and health and wellness network. And it's kind of just happening. Um, Prey Stock for me last year was a faith thing. Um, I was like, everything I do, nobody shows up, you know? Yeah. It, was, it was a while, <laughs> like nobody was listening to my songs uh -huh. back then, and I was just kind of like, this is enough. So with Prey Stock, I, I put it forward, I, I made the website, I had many sleepless nights just, you know, drawing and like putting this stuff on paper. And um, I put it out and the first response from an artist was in Australia, the next one was in London, and it was like all these global responses were happening and I was like, and I like, I remember I like pushed myself back from my laptop and I was like, okay God, thanks for the signs, like I'm going to go local now. Wow. So I had my first live audition at a place in Vetner, New Jersey, it's a Vetner coffee house and they thought that um, they reached out to me on Instagram platform and said, what is Prey Stock? Like, this feels good, it sounds good, I want to be a part of it. And they wanted us to do a beach concert. But God had other plans. So, I wanted a beach concert, yeah. why not, you know? Yeah. So, um, we have the live audition and here they come, they just started coming. And by the time that the first Prey Stock happened last year on June 23rd at the Piccolo Cafe, we had 17 original artists. No cover songs, all original worshipers, people who came from different denominations, different religious beliefs, backgrounds. And what I find the most interesting about all this is what I'm learning. I'm learning that people are scared, afraid, and they put up invisible divides. They put mm. up walls because they'll see a Jesus patch or the Jesus person will see a Buddha patch and you know, like like all this different stuff and oh they do yoga. So it's like all these invisible borders that people are putting up when really we're we're in this thing together you know what I mean and we're called to love each other regardless of our differences so that is the heart of Prey Stock and that is what this has become to me is really bringing people together in spite of our differences and kind of opening and pulling off the the veil and the blindfold that it doesn't really matter what your personal distinct beliefs are I love you Mm. Come hold my hand. Come have yeah. food with me. It, it doesn't matter when we're in the grocery store. It doesn't matter yeah. when we're doing business. So why would it matter when we're sitting together in a in a sanctuary or, or a place of, of community and fellowship? You know what I mean? So nice. <laughs> that is so deep and so beautiful. So. Um, Oh, wow, there's just so much, like, <laughs> I want to dig into. <laughs> that is, oh, oh yes, so, okay. so, so let's, um, let's talk about, so you had the 17 artists, and that happened. I don't know how you had it standing in the first, there okay. you go. <laughs> <laughs> See, shaking there up you go. Around there. Um, so, you know, so you had the artists, and what was um, the response, what, what was, what was it so like? the actual response at the first yeah. prey sack 
Oh my gosh. So first of all, um, it feels like you're just going to your family's barbecue. You know, it's not this like super overproduced, over commercialized situation. And, um, you know, it, it just felt like home. You know what I mean? Like we were family. Everybody who entered in was family. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and the content that was coming out of these artists, I didn't look for them. They just showed up in my view and presented themselves with really great music. Like, the, the musicality itself, like the instrumentation and the melodies, it was so uplifting and felt so good. Kind of like a little back in the day, you know, like going to barbecues and when like the, the, the corporate media networks weren't so flooded with negativity and, you know, all, all that stuff. Yeah. So um, that's a whole other level of this, you know, so yeah. um, it was beautiful. There was even one point um, that our schedule completely got broken up. Uh, we had a schedule, you know, we're trying to move on schedule, and Hourglass came all the way from Maryland, and it's so cool because they're husband and wives and their kids, and, like, it's just great. So they were singing this song, Washed by the Water, and all of a sudden, the sky just... And it started wow. pouring. And um, I thought that, that was cool because that was kind of something that happened at, at Woodstock, the original yes. Woodstock. So Stock is the concept of Woodstock, reinvented and revisited. Um, just cleaned up a little bit, you know what yeah. I mean? So we've learned a lot since Woodstock and we want to take the best parts of that and, and move forward. So at this point, some people were running, trying to leave, and then a couple of our guys, went, Pastor Kente, I, I think he lives in Britain actually, um, he, he jumps up and my, my boy Wolf comes up and you know, these, these men, I just, I watch the men, which is really cool because I think our men, especially in this time, because there's so much women empowerment that the men kind of fall to the wayside right now. And we need to still, as women, encourage our men to be good men and to have bold voices and, you know, to do the right thing. So I thought it was really cool how the men took over and just started like, where are you going? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they started <laughs> singing and um, you know, I'm like, oh God, help, you know, and I'm like, wait, God is doing this. Like, this is supposed to happen. So there was a young lady by the name of Grace Crosby, who is a spontaneous singer. She's on crutches, mind you. And I'm like, come on, Grace, you know, hop up with your, hop up with your crutches. <laughs> so she gets up there and she lets out this beautiful, spontaneous song as, and she said the first thing she said, God says, and she said, um, will you come dance in the rain with me? Will you come dance like you used to do? And it was so beautiful. And we all were just like, <gasps> like it grabbed our souls. Like it wasn't just like, you know, we're observing a concert and we're all just trying yeah. to escape. Yeah. We were connected in a way that I don't think any of us have ever felt connected before. And um, every musician from each band got up there and just started spontaneously jamming for like two hours, which led into... Um, <laughs> they closed the schedule. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah. And then there's a song um, that myself and my partner co-written, co and it's called One Voice. And it's very much like a we are the world kind of concept. Mm -hmm. And it's a global call to action for people to come together and open up your eyes and open up your hearts. And um, we, we all did this, too. Everybody that was a part of the platform got together, started spontaneously singing. We didn't really have a rehearsal, um, but by the midway through the song, we got it on lock, and one voice was the song that was playing, and the whole um, crowd was all in hands, like in lines, like back and forth, back and forth, and they were all just holding hands, like as one voice, like saying, wow. we are, we are, one voice. So it was wow. really cool. It was oh, wow. the most family-oriented, non-generational gap kind of thing I've ever been a part of and I didn't do it you know what I mean yeah. I, I was basically you know typing yeah. up the stuff but like this is much bigger than me wow oh wow well I I, I I'm so like excited <laughs> to hear more we're going to take a quick commercial sure. break and when we come back we're going to elaborate on that and we're going to talk about all oh, so much more so um, we'll take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back on 30 Minutes of Madness. I'm here with artist, performer. It's just so much um, here with Stevie Lee. So we'll be right back.
More than a century ago, General Tire was born, right here in America. Since then, we've made a name for ourselves by making tires you can depend on. Tires built to handle any road this country can throw at them and relied on by every kind of driver. So you know that no matter where life takes you, with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Hi, this is Ben Lurry from Ben's ProServe. Are you looking to save money on your utility bills? As one of South Jersey's sources for the New Jersey Clean Energy Program, we can install insulation and an efficient heating and air conditioning system for you with up to $4,000 in rebates and up to $10,000 in 0% financing to help you save even more. Call us today at 856-500-3222 or visit besttocallben.com. the unexpected beyond the insurance 696-0700 if you haven't been to Bruni's breakfast and burgers yet what are you waiting for they offer unique and fresh take on breakfast lunch and dinner formerly Torelli's and Billy D's they are keeping tradition alive with their version of the special sauce burgers and breakfast served all day with your busy schedule in mind they offer takeout and fast and friendly eat-in service call 856-765-5063 and they'll have your order ready and waiting for you check them out on Facebook to see the menu and their rave reviews Bruni's breakfast and burgers is located in the Millville Arts District 423 North High Street Cedar Lane Feeds in Elmer has everything you need to keep your livestock happy and healthy. They've got food, medications, grooming supplies, treats, and toys for animals of all sizes. For indoor pets or outdoor pasture, Cedar Lane Feeds has you covered. Farmers, be sure to stop by on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. for their weekly livestock auction. Cedar Lane Feeds is open Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's Cedar Lane Feeds in Elmer. Welcome back to 30 Minutes of Madness. It's your girl Millie Madness here on QBC TV 22. And I'm here with my special guest, Stevie Lee, and all the great, wonderful things she's doing in our community. So again, awesome. Thank you for coming on the show. And um, I wanted to kind of touch up on, so we talked about your first um, prey stock, and now tell us about what you have going on now. Okay. So... Like, I'm always an open book. I tried everything <laughs> not to do prey stock again this year. And the reason is, is because when you're doing something, and this is kind of a word of encouragement too, when you're doing something and you have a vision and you have a goal, sometimes you need to do it yourself. You know what I mean? And that's what happened the first year. And when you're trying to do something positive, everything around you will try to come in and attack every part of your life to break you down and yeah. stop you from doing it much like me trying to get here today yeah. and um <laughs> keep pushing push through because that's what happened and 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 pray like ask god ask the universe ask whatever like don't don't give up you know what i mean just keep moving forward those goals because they're going to happen those, especially if it's good and it's serving people if it's serving the the land that we live on we have to see that we're in a time now that the world is in madness, you know what I mean? So things like this, I think, are like ready, they're ready to kind of just like flourish. Um, and I really believe that you hear a lot of negativity of people watching certain like news shows and that's all they watch, so all they hear is bad news. And they think like, oh, I hate the next generation, you know? And you're like, what? You, you what? Like, no, these are our kids and there's still hope for them. You know, stop listening and go out and start looking. Like, get off your phones, get off, your social media and go out and hug somebody and talk to somebody and you'll find out that the world is really not as bad as it seems 
and that if, if we start to just focus on these good things. So I wasn't going to do this. And then I said, you know, I said, God, yeah. <laughs> and I, said, yeah. I screamed it. Yeah. I said, if you want me to do this, you have to make it easier this year because I almost didn't make it last year. <laughs> and um, that same day, that same day, two people, a girl came into the store that I work at, Bonterra Market in Northfield, New Jersey, a health okay. and wellness store. And then uh, another woman that works there was a vendor last year. And they both that day were like, what do you need? Like, you have to do praise stock. And I was like, I got a what? Yeah. <laughs> so then all of a sudden I'm like, well, praise is, uh, we got to get moving if I'm going to do this. So it, it kind of just, again, the same thing. It just started happening. And um, it's really cool how I was, you know, even referred to you as by an old friend from my childhood. And um, Ahmed. Yeah, shout out to Ahmed. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's funny how people who are supposed to be in your life will full circle around and you'll see them in different seasons of your life. And there was um, a pastor by the name of Carl Lentz who I think is really cool in this generation because they like speak our language, you know. And um, he said, when you're, when you're on your path and you have a mission, you keep running. You know what I mean? If somebody shows up and you see them, you look at them, you're like, all right, keep running. Don't stop don't stop like don't stop to see what they're doing you keep running on your path and then you keep running on your path and you keep looking to see who's who's sticking around in those seasons even though they might be doing their own thing on their own path eventually some people are gonna they're gonna turn the car the other way or you know ride the bike mm -hmm. off the road and you just gotta stay on your path so I believe that my entire life was to come back around and do this and bring people together. So, pray stock number two. Yeah, um, it's going to be July sixth at the Piccolo Cafe from one p.m. to fireworks. Um, there's going to be fireworks down the street at the Richland Park, um, and then I'm sure we're going to have like sparklers and stuff like that right there. And um, it's it's just happening. You know, I can't really wow. say much other than it's happening. It's building itself. The people are coming. And, you know, I'm definitely screening things as they come in and using discernment um, because we want to ultimately make sure that this whole message is cohesive and everyone who's a part of it is protected um, in a way that, you know, we're, we're all walking reputations of what we believe and what we're putting out there. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, so how can someone um, be a part of it or even attend or sure. how, how I mean you can just show on up to the Piccolo yeah. Cafe on July 6th it's that simple uh, if you are a local service provider if you are a local artist a local holistic healer or we're not the healer but you know you got to practice or something like whatever it is I don't care if you're a landscaper if you're a local business or a local company that wants to get into a network where we can share because what's happening is you know these big box corporations come in and, and the, what happens to us little people <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know I mean? we, yes. We, we, we need help so we need to help each other we need to stop worrying about what the a-listers and the corporate society is doing because if you really think about it we're so far disconnected from that network anyway so don't worry about what the one percent is doing let's get together with the other 99 percent and say you know what let's help each other let's stop focusing on the newest trends the newest this the newest that let's look at each other and say who's what's my neighbor got going on how can i help my neighbor down the street or you know i, I drove an hour to get here because or it's <laughs> more like two yeah. hours or whatever <laughs> but like you know we're local we're connecting and i believe that this is what we need to do more of so you're basically, if you need to contact me, you just Instagram is the easiest thing for me, or yeah. Facebook because it's a collective, really easy thing. My phone gets, you know, fumbled with all these people. So the simplest thing to do is a Gmail. Um, if you want to submit something, it's praystockfest at gmail.com, and that should be on the TV somewhere with the P R A I S T O C K F E S T at gmail.com. And then my personal Instagram is Stevie Lee, S-T-E-V-I-L-E-I-G-H. And then the Praise Stock page is just at Praise Stock on Instagram. So it's P-R-A-I-S-T-O-C-K. And it's as simple as that. Nice. <laughs> and even if you want to show up that day in hopes that there's a space for you to be a vendor, feel free. Uh, we'll make it work. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm creating a magazine, which is going to be annual, an e-mag. So instead of wasting a bunch of trees like I was going to, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can make an e-magazine and this way people can still funnel in all year long and connect to that 
hub, which Preystock seems to be creating itself as. Nice, <laughs> nice, awesome. So um, tell us a little bit about um, what you have going on um, with your music and with um, your props. Sure. Um, so this hat has been at my job for about six months. I don't know whose it is. <laughs> I would try to find the owner. <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? Um, last week I was like, I'm taking the hat. It's been yeah. here six months. So um, this hat, to me specifically, is just a reminder that all of us have a story. We all have a story. And this story is the truest story that I know because it's mine and I've actually walked it and I lived it and people have always said you know your story can change somebody's life your story is you know your experience your testimony so it's really important that we don't just kind of encapsulate all of the stuff that we've learned um, it's important that we talk to people about what we're going through um, there was a moment I'm gonna get deep now there was a moment uh, last year right before the festival that one of my friends reached out to me and I said hey I won't mention his name, but I said, hey, I said, why don't you come and, and speak at Preystock? I said, I think you'd, you'd be great. You're so inspirational, you're motivational. Um, however, this gentleman was, you know, in a, in a space in his life where he was struggling uh, with addiction, um, with the pills and everything that we all know very well. You know, this is in our households, it's in our micro families. If you don't have a family member, you got a friend or a coworker or a doctor or whoever. And um, he said, you know, I don't think I'm worthy to speak. I don't think I'm in a good space or a good place to speak. And I was like, see, this is it. This is what people think that you got to be condemned and you got to be perfect and polished. He's like, I still smoke cigarettes, he said. And I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, you still smoke cigarettes? Like, yeah, like that's a thing. It's not good for you. But just because you smoke cigarettes and you're in this process of healing doesn't mean there's somebody that's going to be in that crowd that is going through the same exact thing in the same place or where you were like and come anyway like the message of prey stock is come as you are come as you are i don't care if you show up with one shoe like the pursuit of happiness i don't care if you come up and you just got home from the club i don't care how you're coming just come it's important that you understand this this love factor here and the spirit factor that's going to be there that's like i said it's bigger than me so Everybody's got a true story. This is my true story, and I've been holding back a long time, you know, to, to really get deep into the details of the music industry and of my own story, and that's, a, that's another time, you know, we'll focus mm -hmm, on that mm -hmm. another time. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm supposed to be dead. Like, I got in two car accidents. There was, like, attempted murder on my life. There's a lot of, like, deep details of my life that, you know, make me who I am today and to be able to come back and appreciate what's in my lap right now and to be able to do this with a smile on my face and regardless of the injuries in my body regardless of my past to be able to come here and still be a light it's important that we keep going it's important that we don't let go yes we gotta yes. yes 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 Okay, so <laughs> I hope I answered we, your question. Yes, absolutely. Um, I I can't thank you enough for coming and sharing your story. Um, so many people are going through so many things. Um, even when you said, "Oh my God, I, you know, I'm trying to get here," and it seems like every like everything's barriers and trying to stop me. I felt like that so many times in my life where I'm trying to do something positive, I'm trying to get to a certain location and I can't get there. Mm -hmm. I'm just, it's insane, but the important part is to get there and I thank you so much that you got here and shared your story and, and everything. I look forward to seeing all the great things um, that you have going on. Um, we're gonna We're gonna end the show with a little something, <laughs> with a little um tell us about the the earrings that that you have okay so <laughs> i actually got these at the piccola cafe i believe it's called the new jersey soap shop she makes like all kinds of little jewelry chaps oh my gosh the chapstick if you're a chapstick wearer oh my gosh it's so <laughs> good strawberry the lemon drop the coconut all good but okay. um she just makes they're adorable you know what i mean and she puts a lot of thought into them so there's going to be vendors there of all kinds um and that's it. So okay. I, I thank the soap shop right. for, for providing these for today. And where can we find your music? Um, 
So honestly, the music, you can find it on that CD. I am on a Pandora station, but I ripped everything down from um, like TuneCore and all that because I was rebelling against the corporate music industry. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna say right. it. Um, but there's a lot of people involved um, that are just great. I'm, you know, there's Arrow and Ember, Nyditra, um, Maddie Bratton is a local talent. We have um, so many thriving okay. seas, um, Streams Church, which is in Williamstown. Um, there's jewelry vendors. There's Karina Boutique in the Hamilton Mall. There's so many different kind of people that are going to be present. Okay, great. So then we're going to um, leave off with a little something from you, a okay. little vocally. Okay, thank you so much for joining us in 30 Minutes of Madness here on QBC TV 22. And it's your girl, Millie Madness. I'll see you next time. Everybody everywhere come listen up come gather there I got something to tell you about a way Oh where your truth the light the one who saved my life everybody now way true light the one who saved my life This is Stevie Lee at 30 minutes of madness with Millie Madness